so um, we are going to handle our presentation in sort of three chunks today. So sort of one, like what is the state of things right now in this moment? Um, what do we expect to come um, in the next month, two months, six months? Um, and we're gonna wrap up with ways that we can take care of one another. Um, we'll share a bunch of resources and then we'll open it up for questions and discussion. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Rachel um, to tell us a little bit about the state of abortion access right now. Yeah. Okay, um, so my main uh, goal to explain to you today is that abortion is currently legal in all 50 states. You guys have to hold on one second. There we go. Um, <laughs> Abortion is currently legal in all 50 states. Um, it is legal here in Texas. If you can find a provider who will provide it to you, um, they are under the threat of SB8. We've been under SB8 since September 1st. That means that um, private entities can sue providers or anyone who aids and abets an abortion after six weeks. Um, so many people seeking abortions in Texas have been leaving the state, um, but many abortions are still occurring in Texas. So um, if you or anyone you know is pregnant, you may be able to get an abortion in Texas. Next slide. Okay, I mean, I believe everyone here understands why we're fighting for this and why this is kind of a central plank in DSA um, and all fights for socialism, but it is very much um, an immigrants' right issue. It's a workers' rights issue. Um, you know, it's a uh, liberation issue on every front. It's a carceral straight and abolition issue. Um, there are just so many ways in which abortion access and rights intersect with all of the other things we're fighting for um, and all of the other ways that we're struggling against capitalism. So um, I think that this, this fight really fits in well with what we're doing. And it's really about everyone um, coming together and uh, fighting against this oppression that, that's very much spreading across the United States right now, but has always existed. Um, and, you know, we have, we have to fight it. We absolutely have to. Next slide. Okay, um, SB 8. So, again, that was a law that passed in May of last year, um, went into effect in September, and we really didn't, I, I personally did not think that it would go into effect. Um, that was stupid of me. And uh, I have learned a, an important lesson, but SB8 went into effect on September 1st. Most abortion clinics in Texas either shut down or had to like severely, severely limit what they can do because now anyone can sue anyone who provides an abortion or aids and abets an abortion in Texas um, after six weeks. So this has uh, just created, there were already access issues to abortion in Texas. There was a waiting period, um, things like that. There continues to be a waiting period but this has created just such a disastrous um, access issue for us. Most people who are seeking abortions, most people do not know they are pregnant when they are six weeks pregnant. Six weeks pregnant means six, uh, six weeks since your last period. So you're really only four weeks pregnant. Um, so many, many, many people don't know. It's extremely hard for you to know that you're pregnant and to be able to set up an abortion, especially because we're seeing fairly long waits now. So people are leaving the state. Since September 1st, the Lilith Fund has been paying for abortions. I think we've paid in almost um, almost every state. We've been sending a lot of people to New Mexico, but also our neighboring states of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Louisiana's clinics experienced some difficulties with a hurricane in the fall. So Oklahoma's clinics are, are shutting down due to laws there now. So we're increasingly focused on New Mexico and Colorado. Um, that's kind of the state of things right now. People are getting abortions, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people are getting abortions every month. We're funding them from Lilla Fund. Our, we have 11 abortion funds in Texas. They're all funding people's travel, their child care, um, the actual procedure, which of course is occurring later now because people have to do so much planning to get a procedure. You know, we were, an abortion was costing $500, $600 before, it's costing over $1,000 for a similar procedure now. So we're funding people who leave, we're making up the gaps, we're helping them in every way we can. Many of us have become sort of travel, abortion travel agents, um, but it's wildly unfair to people, even if they can access, to access healthcare in another state. To have to leave the state to have an abortion is 
so outrageous. Um, this should be something that everyone has in their community. It's healthcare, it should be free. Um, we should be supporting our friends who are doing it. So it's really, even if there weren't all these excessive barriers, even if it wasn't about the money, it's just really outrageous that you would ask someone to drive 10 hours to receive healthcare. Next slide. We're also not like 100% sure that funding people out of state is technically legal. And I think at this point we don't give a shit, but um, cause we're gonna keep doing it. Um, but you know, at first we were like, maybe this is illegal. Um, and so far, no, we've been sued. The little one's been sued a few times um, and kind of, we have that case, obviously the SB8 case, the Dobbs case, there's just so many issues currently in front of the judiciary, which is a just a garbage place for people. Like I say that as an attorney, the judiciary is horrible and I hate them all, um, all of them. So <laughs> it's a terrible, terrible way to govern and I hate it and I'm really mad about it. <clears throat> there's this, <laughs> let's fight them, let's do it. I'm, you know, I can be pretty scrappy. Um, so on last Monday night during the Met Gala, um, a leaked opinion dropped for the case that will likely overturn Roe v. Wade, and that is uh, Dobbs versus Jackson Hill. Roe v. Wade was decided in 73 by uh, a 7-2 core, all male, all men, all identifying men. Um, and uh, actually, I think the person who wrote it, Harry Blackman, was put on the court by Nixon, so a really different time. Um, it's not a great decision, and in many states, people already had the right to have an abortion before it. It doesn't rest on very strong legal grounds, and there's been a lot of back and forth about that in the 50 years since it was decided, but even in 1992, when Republicans had a majority of the Supreme Court and they challenged Roe v. Wade, the outcome of that was KCV Planned Parenthood, which reaffirmed Roe, and Sandra Day O'Connor was a writer on that, um, and basically said, no, the right to have an abortion is protected by the Constitution under the 14th Amendment. Um, so this is really shocking. It's actually very shocking, I think. Um, Supreme Court's only ever overturned three cases in its entire existence. So um, a fourth one is to have it be this and to have this, but Roe was always the floor. Like we always wanted more than Roe. So um, we will be fighting for much, much, much more than Roe. Now, like I said, abortion is legal in all 50 states right now. Roe is the law of the land this minute. When and if this case comes out the way that um, the leak has come out, Roe, abortion will become illegal in many states. Many states have a trigger ban where the, that's decided and then abortion becomes illegal and it's criminalized. Um, and how that will work, we don't know yet. Um, we now have the capacity, all of the abortion funds in Texas, to get people who are seeking abortions out of the state. And we will continue to get people out of the state uh, when and if it becomes criminalized in Texas. It'll shut down a lot of our neighboring states. So um, we'll be focused on, on expanding access there. And I think one thing we can do is make sure that that are some of our neighboring states who might be on the fence like to support them in their legislative efforts to co like codify um, the right to have an abortion and abortion access. But um, if abortion becomes criminalized, people will still have abortions. We have no doubt about that. Um, people will still desperately seek abortions and people will still get abortions. Um, and how safely that happens and how um, convenient that is to them is kind of up to us. So that is Someone said Mexico, and I will say it's actually very hard to cross the Mexican border. Um, it's heavily militarized. For people who might be here undocumented, it's very dangerous for them to cross. They might not be able to get back. Um, but Mexico has decriminalized abortion. I don't know accessibility-wise what it looks like to obtain one over there. Um, and we do have partners, and we have spoken to them uh, through the NNAF, the National Network of Abortion Funds in Mexico. So obviously our abortion funds in other states are really lifting us up and helping us out. Uh, we've been sending a lot of people to Chicago, Denver, um, other places where they have more access, but it sucks. And I hate putting someone on a plane during a pandemic 
to get an abortion, which they should be able to get, you know, here in Austin or in Houston or in San Antonio, wherever they are, and be with their friends. I had an abortion in 2009, and I sat on my friend's couch and watched The Fifth Element twice that day. Um, it's so good. And we ate Chinese food. And, like, that's what I want for everyone to, like, have for their abortion is to really be able to do it comfortably in the place they want, around the people they love. And um, this travel is just, to me, it shows, like, the incredible courage and bravery of people seeking abortions. Just, like, wow, you know, people really trying to control their own lives doing this. So we're really proud of everyone who has abortions. Um, we're really proud to be people who help access it. We do think, we do believe that that row will be overturned next month. Um, so that's it for me, I think. This is, sorry to leave yeah. you with happy news. Oh, it's cool. Um, I pretty much have been like vamping myself up for like, cool, I've got a lot of bad news, but we're going to go through it and we're going to end this in a place where, um, where hopefully people feel empowered with information and confident about what we need to do moving forward. So as we're seeing right now already, rallies and protests are popping up all over the country. Um, people widely in this country support abortion access. Um, they support the right to abortion, um, which is why they're taking it to, we're seeing people show up in the streets and you know more like organized protests. We're seeing pop-up rallies in front of the Supreme, Supreme Court justices' homes. Keep all that shit up. Um, <laughs> not a second of peace is I think what I saw on a shirt today and I fully agree with that. Um, so it's really heartening to see all of the rallies and protests. I think um, there's definitely a little bit of a question in terms for a lot of folks is sort of like, so what's the goal here? Um, and I think that's gonna vary depending on who is where, um, but I definitely support um, uh, bothering Supreme Court justices um, because this is the elites just protecting the elites, right? But we've, we've seen the New York Times come out with like more, you know, a lot of um, pushing a lot of opinions about how we, how we should be, um, you know, really civil in these times. And I think that, again, I think that is elites protecting elites and um, nah, fuck all that. Yeah, abolish the Supreme Court, absolutely. Um, so right now we're seeing these and I think it is going to, we are going to continue to see rallies and protests come up, which is why part of what we'll talk about later is a little bit about like protest tactics and things like that. There is a piece of legislation that the Democrats could have passed today, the Women's Health Protection Act, which mostly basically codifies Roe, adds a couple other things, um, despite having the uh the white house the uh you know and both in both houses of congress um the democrats have decided to do nothing joe biden's message right now is um vote for us in november and i will codify this in january um and to him i say um what the fuck we need abortion access now um straight up um so it is not um you know for for the folks who really want this to be a fight that we can win um, through the Democrats. Um, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't see, I see this as simply a tactic for getting votes and not a tactic for getting us abortion access and increasing, you know, and codifying our right to abortion in, um, in our, in the U.S. law. Yeah, fuck them for sure. So given the Democrats' inability to act right now, we foresee Roe following sometime in June. Um, this is something that people in abortion access have known and have been saying for months and months, um, for years even, that, that they were just trying to put together the right pieces of a puzzle um, in terms of what the law that they needed to pitch um, to the right version of the court in order to get this to happen. When Roe falls, abortion is going to be further restricted or completely outlawed in 23 states. The graph that you're, or the chart that you're looking at here, all of these orange states are banned states. Um, the teal colors are where the nearest clinics are right now, and the um, gray states are states that hadn't, at the publishing of this graphic, hadn't had any decisions. I know that at least Connecticut um, today decided that they would protect, that basically if someone were um, being charged in their own state with like the threat of lawsuits for leaving the state for an abortion, that they would be a haven um, for those people. 
Um, there is some chat going on, or there's some stuff going on in the chat, um, but I will um, get to it just as soon as I can. So um, when Roe falls, um, a lot of states are going to lose access to legal abortion. So clinics are very likely going to close or have to change how they manage patients, right, and what way they'll be able to continue to support patients with other things that clinics do, like birth control, um, IUD insertions, right, that, that type of thing. Um, so this is not only going to affect abortion, it's certainly going to affect other, um, other like reproductive health care as well. And as Rachel said, abortion bans do not stop abortions from happening. Um, it also doesn't make them unsafe. Um, in a moment, I'll speak a little bit about self-managed abortion. I mean, I just want to kind of push back against this idea. Um, there is a lot of rhetoric online about um, going back to coat hanger abortions and back alleys and stuff like that. And simply, we in this day and age have access to abortion pills. Um, and abortion pills are a very safe way of managing an abortion. Um, so while abortion bans may prevent legal abortions from happening, um, they don't stop uh, all abortions, and it is absolutely possible to obtain an abortion that is safe um, outside of the legal system and the clinic system. Now, I also really want to emphasize that this is not going to stop at abortion, and we're already seeing it in, we're seeing it in proposals for restrictions on things like long-term birth control, although I will say that the, the specific attacks against IUDs are primarily not as a form of birth control right now. Right now, the, they are attacking it in terms of if you get an IUD inserted really shortly after unprotected sex, um, it can be used as sort of like a plan B, like basically instead of plan B. Um, there's a lot more to it than that, but I'm just speaking about it from this angle that like, that's why they're going after, that's one of the reasons why they're going after IUDs. But it is absolutely not out of the realm of, you know, reason when we're thinking about in line with what these like straight up fascists want, um, which is to prevent people from being able to access birth control, to be able to prevent people from accessing plan B, um, from trying to remove our ability to control our bodies and how and when we reproduce um, in order to continue to control us, right? In order to continue to have um, a class of workers who are subjugated um, by their inability to control the reproductive system. So, as Rachel spoke to earlier, the fight that we're seeing right now here for abortion rights is also inextricably tied to our fight for trans rights. We are already seeing in Louisiana um, this ridiculous bill um, making it um, a felony in order to, um, to provide um, gender uh, affirming care. Um, and I don't think, and, and I think that we can expect that to continue. They are kind of emboldened at this point. They see this as a big fat W um, and they're gonna continue pushing towards the right um, as much as they think that they can and can get away with. To underscore what Rachel said, abortion funds are still going to be here. Um, like Rachel mentioned, I'm someone who's been basically like a travel agent for people seeking abortions for the past however long. Um, and it is hard work and we're going to continue to do it, even though we know that um, that clinic waits are going to get longer. It's going to become more difficult. Abortion funds are organizations that are here to help people get abortions. That is our role. Some of us are um, volunteers. Many of us are volunteer led. Some funds have staff and even then those staff can't hold everything that that fund needs to meet the demand of people who are calling them. Um, and we're not going to stop doing that. <laughs> um, so uh, lastly, I just wanted to touch a little bit on self-managed abortion. I have some resources linked here, and I just want to specify I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. Um, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice, but a person could go to plancpills.org um, and learn about self-managed abortion through pills and learn about places that can send them to um, an address. Um, we will also go over some really important information about digital security related to abortion access. Um, 
because we know that we are going to see and we are we have already seen and will continue to see an increase in um, the criminalization of people who are suspected to have self-managed their abortions. Um, so really quickly, I just want to mention um, that should someone um, take um, you know, take abortion pills and have an issue and need to go into a doctor, um, the effects that you feel are quite similar to that of a spontaneous miscarriage. Um, and there's a lot of information online um, to protect and support people um, as we really expect these like issues of criminalization to become more rampant um, as the, the, the efforts to control our bodies become more specific and more targeted. Um, yeah, to um, one of the questions that I do wanna um, lift up from the chat was someone asking about like how likely it is for to be personally sued if you're a volunteer with an abortion group like the Bridge Collective. Um, we don't know of any suits against volunteers or donors under SB8. Um, I kind of like to refer to it as sort of like there are bigger fish to fry, like it's going to be more impactful for those assholes to go go after someone who like has a name and has you know a bunch of stuff than it will be to go after tiny little fish like us so yeah um okay i feel like i have not sufficiently like ramped everyone up in like a positive way but we are going to talk a little bit now about how we can take care of each other and this is the part where i think we um where we can do a lot of really good work so um, just to like underscore before I hand it over to Sarah, um, abortion funds are here for you. If you need an abortion, we are going to fight like hell to make sure that you can get that abortion. Um, and this fight is going to be, it's not going to be over this month. It's not going to be over next month. It's going to be a long one. Um, and I'm glad that you are all here with us. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Sarah um, to talk a little bit about taking care of each other. Um, and Sarah, definitely, I know I tossed in a couple of slides too, so definitely feel free to be like, Kim, do you want to take this one? Because the answer is yes. Sure. Um, and you might have to like make the decision when to click since <laughs> I don't know what's on the slides. But um, yeah, so I know that we like call this post row and I guess like the time period before row is our best, um, I guess like preview of what might come. Um, there's several things that are going to be different from the, you know, from before 1973. So for one thing, we live in a much more carceral state. Um, cops have more money. There's more of them. We have more jails, more people going to jail. Um, and so the level of persecution might be higher than we would have seen. Um, and also now there's digital forensics. So, like, there's more options, I guess, for how people can find out either that you're, like, going to an abortion clinic or even going to a health clinic that, you know, people might think is, is offering abortions. Um, you know, so there's just more, I guess, like, paper trail that can exist. And we're already seeing, like, in cases um, where people are being... Um, I guess, like dragged into the carceral system for things related to abortion. It's often because um, um, telling someone who Wait. turned out not to be trustworthy Wait, are being tracked in some kind of digital manner. So there's this cute little graphic here, but um, I'll also drop the link in the chat that has like the more, has more details. But basically, despite the fact that there's more ways people can track you, cops are also pretty dumb. So I don't want you to get too paranoid. Like it's pretty easy to um, take steps to like avoid being tracked. Um, some of it's like turning off locations on your phone. Um, there was recently a thing in the news, like in this past week, that some apps that have like nothing to do with healthcare, um, such as like a prayer app, is selling location data to people who are anti-abortion. So you might have an app that's like a phone game but if it has location data on it, there's someone out there who is like financially motivated to sell your location of every place you visited. Um, some of it's like using Signal or Wire, which are encrypted chat services, instead of using the chat services provided by like DMs on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, because um, those, those aren't encrypted and someone owns it. A lot of it's like, you know, just use a secure browser option or use a computer at a library instead of, you know, Googling stuff on your own phone. Um, 
And a lot of this stuff applies if you are also just participating in protests. Um, depending on who you are, like marginalized folks are more likely to be targeted by cops. Um, but we know from the George Floyd protests and the Ferguson protests that people who have been like caught or like seen in photos, um, just like based on what they're wearing or where they're standing in the photo or who they're with. Um, I can talk about Telegram in a second. Like who they're, so based on just like photos from protests, people have been persecuted by cops. Like a lot of the people who were prominent in photos of Ferguson have actually been killed. Um, so, you know, know your own risk. And I would say just don't post any photos online of people who you think might be more likely to be persecuted. Like, I'm, I'm a white woman. I'm fine if you like wanna, you know, take pictures of me like doing some crazy stuff at a protest. But I wouldn't like take a photo of anyone who might already be a target. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna drop some links in the chat that have kind of basic stuff. Um, and they'll have different like details for depending on what phone you use, but it's, it'll all be in there. Um, as for Telegram, I think, I don't know why, but it used to be recommended and isn't anymore. So I don't know what happened in like the last two years. So I would just say stick to Signal or Wire. Um, but I think that's it. Yeah, don't talk to cops. Another basic one is um, don't use any of the like eye or finger unlocking for your phone because it's legal for the cops to like take your finger and stick it on your phone. Um, but if you're using like a pin number, then they can't get around that. So pretty yeah, basic definitely. stuff. So no reason to be paranoid. Like it's, it's, it's easy for us to cover our tracks. Yeah. Thanks so much, Sarah. I'll wrap up with just a few more things. Um, a sort of in the realm of like things that you can do, things that we can do, right? So one of them, learn what would be needed if someone you love needed an abortion. Like what would they have to do? Um, we've got some resources at the end of this, uh, end of this presentation that will um, literally show you how um, someone needs to get a clinic. They need to go to the clinic. They need to find out how far along they are. That, that way they know what their options are. Can they get this taken care of in Texas? Um, would they still, um, you know, do they need to travel elsewhere? What other options are available to them? Um, learning what would you would need to do is such a like beautiful way for you to show care to people that you know. Um, like, yeah, there's a lot to, you'll learn a whole lot about how fucked up this, is all, this all is by, by like going through the process of trying to find, trying to help someone get one. Um, that alone will radicalize you. And sometimes it does radicalize people. A lot of people at abortion funds are literally people who had to go through this garbage and were like, cool, this is all effed. I'm going to join this fight. Which leads me to the next one. Organize, organize, organize. We know that all these fights are connected, that they're going to continue. They're going to continue to escalate, dep especially depending on how many seats and how the legislation legislative bodies change in the next year. We have our own lovely Texas sledge session coming up again this summer, next January, and we're in this for the long run. So staying involved with organizations like DSA is really awesome, especially because we really try, our whole purpose of being a member-driven organization is to, um, you know, work together as individuals, you know, going from being individuals into a more collective model and seeing how we can move and use our power together um, to win fights, right? So um, I definitely encourage y'all, if you aren't already in DSA to join, um, if you would like to learn more, um, like Heather said, feel free to um, shoot us a message um, and we will help you, um, you know, get acquainted and answer questions and that sort of thing. Uh, before I get to resources, the other next easy step that you can take to support abortion funds is to donate to them. Um, if you didn't already know, we are doing an online um, fundraiser right now for abortions. Um, this link will help you donate to nine Texas abortion funds all at once. You can set it up to be recurring. Um, you can set it up to go just once. Um, but funding abortions is such a radical act of care, I can't even tell you. So... Um, I'm seeing Anne and I'm sorry, Lynn and Andy's question about um, purchasing products online. They require a credit card and an address. Absolutely. 
each person needs to assess their own individual like risk level. I will say that I have heard from um, safety and abortion privacy advocates that they encourage things like gift cards, you know, Visa gift cards that you can purchase at the grocery store um, using either um, another person's address or a PO box if that's a possibility for you. Um, again, each person sort of has to assess their own risk level here. Um, and uh, yeah, and I am not a lawyer. <laughs> Um, all right, great. Uh, so the very last thing I wanted to mention is we put together um, a link tree of resources. I will drop it in the chat in just a second. It includes these things in addition to, um, I've list, we've listed all of the events that Austin DSA has going on around abortion access right now. Um, we've included links about links that people need to know about getting abortions right now. So um, needabortion.org is specifically resources for Texans. Plan C pills, um, ooh, that should say .org, I think. Plan C pills, I think is .org. Um, resources about self-managed abortion. I need an A.com is so wonderful. Um, it will literally, like, it, it is, I'm a person, I need to get an abortion. What do I do? They'll ask you how old you are, where you're at, um, and how far along you think you are, and they'll help you find clinics in your area, they'll help you find funds to help you pay for it, they'll help you find funds to help you get there. Um, it's just a really excellent, uh, a really excellent website. Um, and it's all funded by like, it's all volunteer run. Um, so if you see their Ko-Fi somewhere, drop some cash in there, they're great. ReaperLegalDefense.org is an organization that provides legal support for folks who are um, being criminalized for suspected self-managed abortion. Um, as we spoke about earlier, we expect this criminalization to increase um, post row. So just mwah, Reaper Legal Defense is great. And then Digital Defense Fund is that digital security for abortion access. They made that great graphic. They also have lots of very cute zines featuring very cute pigeons um, teaching you about things like encryption and um, other digital security topics. Okay, um, I think that's it for our slides and our presentation. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, and I'd really like to, I guess, open it up for questions or discussion. 